Hello again, everybody. This is Spencer. I want to share with you another art project that I think you'll enjoy. The last couple of weeks, we've been working in pencil, looking at shading and values. So I want to switch mediums tonight, and I want to go with uh, watercolor. So I wanted to show you a couple, couple of my paintings that I've done. I'll bring them up here where the camera can pick it up. And this is uh, just a, a really almost a fictitious western scene. What I want us to look at is the sky, and that's that's what we're going to work on tonight. How do you paint a sky like that? And um, let me show you another example before I talk too much about it. So I've got this one here, and uh, this is actually a little flatland farm scene over towards St. Louis. And you can see that it's blue up here, and it morphs down into kind of a yellow, and or got an orangish cast over here. And then it gets this really nice, rich violet, which are the, just those really dusky colors. So uh, if you can learn to paint like this, you can do some really incredible paintings. This is a, a called; these are called gradient washes. And I want to show you two different approaches to it tonight. A uh, just a one color gradient where we go, we'll go like from at the top blue down to nothing, uh, just down to the white paper. And then the other thing I want to show you will be uh, probably just a two-color gradient. This is, like I said, it's got blue, yellow, orange, uh, violet in it. This one here has uh, blue, and it goes into yellow, and then it goes into kind of an orange down there. So we'll probably just do a, a not, not even really shooting for a sky tonight. We'll just do, uh, just showing you how to blend from one color to the other. It's a lot of fun, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's get started, okay? All right, as I said, this is called a gradient wash, and I'm going to do a, a wash starting right up here with the, the blue color. I'm going to use a color called phthalo blue. It's a really strong blue. And I'm just going to gradually thin it out, so by the time it gets down here, hopefully it'll just be white paper. Uh, doesn't always work perfect, but maybe I can do it good this time. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is take a, a wide brush. This is a two-inch brush right here. And I'm just going to dip it in, in some clear water here. And I'm, I'm just going to paint part of this, this one side. You notice I got it taped off so I can do my one color wash here and I'll flip around and do my two color wash over here. So anyway, let's uh, see what we get here. So I'm wetting this surface and by wetting it, that's going to make the colors flow really good. So let me get a liberal amount of water on there. Okay, and I'm trying to keep this side dry here. so. Uh, Hopefully I can do that. So I'm going to reach in here and get, get my color. It's called phthalo blue, and it is a really, really strong color. And you can see right there what it looks like on the brush. And so let's, let's see what she does when I put it on here. So I'm just going to go right straight across now. Because that's moving too fast on me, I'm going to do something just like this right here. And what I like to do is let gravity paint the picture. So you, you watch this right here as that creeps on down. Now I'll take and turn it just to make it all flow down this way. And you can see there's a, a spot there that's not quite right. Okay, and I've already already got an issue here if you can maybe you noticed it right here the blue got down in there so I'm just going to take and put a little bit of just plain water in there and try and flush that back out of there I've heard so many people say that watercolor is an unforgiving medium that once you make a mistake it's done that is not true don't buy that don't believe it it's very forgiving it just makes the rules and you got to play by them I like to see how that, that paints moving flowing there get that little run that's trying to happen there thinning it out I think it's going to work out pretty good. Now just remember if you're, you're doing a uh, painting with a nice blue sky, this is what you're going to, something you're going to have to be able to do to make a nice, like a nice blue summer sky 
where it's at the zenith way up high, it's a real dark blue. And then as it gets closer to the horizon, it gets a lot lighter. This is how you do it right here. And you can see how it's just smoothing out, leveling out. Right now it kind of looks like little rain streaks. I don't know if you can see it right there, but that's okay. To stop that, just take and turn it that way. And now it'll all start creeping down that way. And then we'll go like that. Try to just keep turning it around, make it, make it go uh, whatever direction you want it to go. Let's put a little more blue in right up here. Flip it around. This blue that's right there, we'll just blot that right up. So you, you know, you can't, you, yeah, you can make a mistake. You can, if you're trying, you can ruin a picture, but it's, you gotta try pretty hard. Pull that back over. Okay, so that's how you that's how you do a one color gradient. So I'm going to stop right there. I've got to let this dry before I can work on this one over here. So I'm going to shut the cameras off, let it dry, and I'll come back in a couple minutes. Okay? Well, any of you that know me know that I change my mind frequently when I'm starting to paint a picture. I, might, I start out going one direction and I decide to do something else. That's the kind of the case here right now. I was going to do just two colors here, but I think I might do a, throw a third one in because I can show you a, just a, a little more in-depth technique. Uh, but I also want to point out, if you see this right here, there's a water stain or a, a splat on, on this watercolor paper that I've got here. Uh, and that happened just because it was careless at some point. I, I was splattering some paint or something that got on there. Uh, that's not a problem. Um, that's, matter of fact, that's why I'm using it as an example uh, for, for this, this demonstration uh, because I you know, I don't really want to put that in, use that piece of paper with a good painting. Uh, but a lot of times that'll come out, so it's not a big deal. We'll see what happens with it. So I, I'm, I want to go kind of more of a uh, evening sky color. And so I think what I'm going to do is start with a blue here, and I'll have a, a pink down here, a color called uh, magenta. It's a real pretty pinkish color. And then I'm going to put what's called raw sienna right in the middle here. And that's just kind of an earthy, like a ochre color, something like that. We're going to start out the same way. I'm going to take my big brush and wet it. I've got some fresh water here, so it's not, not dirty. The brush has got a little bit of residue of that blue in there. You can see it maybe on the camera, but that's okay. So again, just wetting that surface. This is dry up here, and I've got a piece of tape across there to keep them separated. So I'm just getting every inch of that paper that I'm going to paint on, I'm getting it nice and wet. So um, I want to start by getting some of this, what's called raw sienna, and I'm just going to put that right in, uh, right, right about here. So I'll go just like that, and get a, I'll get some good coverage of it. Okay, so that's kind of a, a buffer between the two colors. And then, let's see, I'm going to get some of this pink. And th this is a real vibrant, pretty color. It's called, for those of you who like details, it's called quinacridone magenta. And you notice I'm leaving a gap of white paper there in between them. Uh, that's so they behave. They don't do anything I don't want them to do just yet. Clean my brush out. Go back into that phthalo blue because that's such a good color. That's such a strong color. And I'm going to go over here and just lay that in just like that. Clean my brush out. And what you're going to notice is I'm lightening it up as, as I work my way down towards that. Again, I left, left the white gap there. Now, what I want to do is set that brush down and just like I did before, I'm going to take, take and turn it, and you get, you get that kind of stuff happening there. But let me block that up a little bit. But you can see that that's working its way down. OK. 
Okay, so let's do this now. Take and make it, everything run down this way. Okay, and now I'm going to flip it around. And just be watching up here for that color to get moving. And if it needs a little bit of help, I'm going to re-wet my brush, get some blue, or not blue, I'm sorry, some magenta, and just intensify that color up there. And bring it down till it gets right up against that raw sienna color. You can see it's starting to, to mix there. I try not to mix colors with my brushes too much because that tends to muddy the color up, make, makes it, uh, just makes it kind of dirty looking. Okay, and you, you can see how that's working its way down in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let it go a little farther, then I'm going to flip it around, put some more blue in here, and that'll work its way down. And before long, those will blend together and give us a real pretty, pretty uh, transition color. So, okay, let me flip it around like that, get some more blue. There we go. That's a nice color there. Oh, you see what it's doing? Splattering on me. No need to panic though. Now, when blue and yellow get together, it'll usually give you a green. And this is kind of a yellow here. However, it's an earth color, so it's not going to really go green. It'll have a little greenish cast, but it goes a little more gray, and that's what I'm looking for. So now let me tilt this around like that. I want, to, want this to just soften out and give me a nice smooth transition there. It takes a little while for, for it to do it. You, you can't panic. you got to just take your time and let it do it. Just like watching paint dry, isn't it? I'm just going to keep letting it go. This is just softening up here. This is going to be really pretty when it's all done. So if you wanted to paint a, a painting like uh, just like just before dusk, like that one I showed you a while ago that had four different colors in it, this is the approach that you would take right here. And you get when these colors all come together, they give you a whole variety of soft, dusky colors, which is absolutely beautiful. And believe it or not, you can do this. This is not that hard. And I'd be happy to show you. If, if you want to get a hold of me, I'll be glad to give you a lesson on it. So I'm going to let that keep moving and let it just keep blending. All right, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this uh, just because I can. And uh, so we've got nice gradient uh, sky colors. We've got this nice blue over here, and then we got this this uh, gradient of three colors here, phthalo blue, raw sienna, and this magenta, and it gives us a nice dusky look. So let's just make a painting out of this. I, I don't have any anything in mind. So I've got some uh, kind of a purple color here, a dusky color that I've mixed up, and experience has taught me that at this time of the day, the late, 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 late afternoon, early, very early in the late evening, you'll find uh, uh, these colors that will come out. All the land just kind of loses its color and it just be takes on this, this uh, violet tone. So that's what, what I'm gonna shoot for here. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna create something and I'm gonna also, in the process, cover this up and get rid of that, that uh, little drop that got on there. So let's see what happens here. Again, I got no, no preconceived notion of what what it's going to turn out like. I'm just going to have some fun with it. Doing what's called a little dry brush in here. When you see that texture of the paper showing through, that's dry brush. Put another kind of a flat plateau back there. And bring that down. And just by doing those, that dry brushing, it gives it enough texture that it, it suggests that there's other, other elements to the land out there. And I'll 
I'll just take that up a little higher. And then the, let that drop down kind of like that. The main thing I, I like to do is just have fun with it. And, I, and if you try this, I want you to have fun with it too. If you'd like, like uh, more information on how to do this, again, just get a hold of me and I'll be glad to share it with you. Okay, so let's uh, just carry that same thought over, over this way. And you can see how that's changed color. Once I put it on just blue, it, it's more of a blue. And it's over here, over that pink, it's kind of a, uh, more of a violet color. So let's just make this plateau just keep on going. Just like that. And again, just having some fun with it. Need that to be fair, fairly dark there, so I'll mix me up just a little bit more of that violet. Again, I used magenta, magenta and phthalo blue. It's not too late to come back in here and pop some more color in there. Cover up that spot there. You just never know what, what it's going to turn out like. You just do your best. Okay, now I'm going to try to put a few cactus in there, saguaro cactus maybe. At one time I lived out in Arizona. I remember what they looked like. So I'll just pop a, a few of them in there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Bring them down so they're close at close at hand. Now you can see I'm kind of I'm getting these little blossoms that's because it's drying and that's a that's another lesson I don't want to get too much into that but that's what's happening there. So let's do the same thing over here get, get a couple of saguaros going. Okay, and then they'll put a they usually have little little arms on them. I hope I didn't miss that with the camera. If I did I'm sorry. A one man show. Alright, so there's uh, two versions of that, and I'm going to let it dry. And I'm going to peel this tape off, and then I'll come back and show you what they, what the finished product looks like, okay? Okay, we are all done, believe it or not. Did all this in probably 20 minutes. Uh, so watercolor is not that hard, you can see that. And I really like the way they turned out. They got a nice, nice little feel to them. This one's kind of, like I say, a sunset dusky colors. This one over here is just kind of middle of the day. It's what's called a monochromatic painting when you use one color. Uh, and so it just... It still works, it still reads. So I hope you've enjoyed this little quick lesson on watercolor. And if you want to know more about watercolor, just get a hold of me and I'll be glad to share it with you, okay? Now, I think one thing that I want to do, uh, just kind of try to pick up some people's spirits because everybody's kind of down right now with the way everything is going. I'm going to give away these, this, these two paintings to, uh, tonight. They're going to be the, you're going to, whoever gets them is going to get both of them because they're on one piece of paper. Uh, first person to contact me through Facebook will get both of these paintings. So find Spencer Meager on Facebook and uh, let me know you'd like to have them and you can have them, okay? All right. Hope you have a good evening. Bye-bye.